Welcome back to Reading Workshop Readers. I am Miss Hans. I'm so excited to continue our historical fiction work, especially because we are getting to a really exciting part in But Not Buddy. And we are also getting into our Ben 3 of the unit. So we are going to continue with our historical fiction work, but now we are going to be reading some nonfiction texts about the Great Depression era, just so that we can learn more about the historical context of the book that we're reading. But before we get there, we have some more work to do around our characters. So here is our growing chart that we have been working on so far. Here are all the lessons that we've been doing. And in our last session, we began to think about minor characters and we really began to think about their perspective. So today, I am going to be teaching you another strategy to help us think about minor characters and their perspective. Our teaching point for today is readers analyze differences in perspective by asking, what do we notice about the character's inner thinking? What do we learn about the character based on what they say and how they act? Our academic vocabulary today is perspective how someone feels and what he or she thinks about something, minor character, another character besides the main character, and inner thinking, the thinking that happens inside our heads that other people from the outside might not realize is happening. But the really cool thing about reading is that you get to find out the inner thinking of the character. So we're going to be paying attention to that today. So what are we trying to achieve? We want to analyze the perspective of main characters and minor characters. We want to investigate how paying attention to characters' inner thinking, dialogue, and actions can tell us a lot about how they feel. This leads me to uh, this part of my teaching connects back to what we were doing in writing workshop at the very beginning of the school year. We were writing these narratives, and I remember that one of our lessons was that we bring our characters to life. We learn about their point of view, their perspective, what they're like, using inner thinking, actions, and dialogue. Those three things we made sure we included in our writing because it really helped us to bring our characters to life. So just like this work is important in our writing, this work is also very important in our reading. So today I want to show you how we can use this to help us grow theories about characters' perspectives. I'm going to be reading an excerpt from But Not Buddy and watch me as I pay attention to the characters' inner thinking, their actions, and their their dialogue. And this is going to help me to think about their perspective. I'm going to model this work with Bud, but you guys are going to try with a different character. Here we go. Son, he said, this is no time to play. I don't know and I don't care why you're out here, but let me tell you how I know you're a long way from home. Are you from Flint? How could he tell I was from Flint just by seeing my face for a second in his headlights? I wonder how grown folks know so doggone much just by looking at you. Something was telling me to answer him, but I still wanted to get a better look. He stood up. You know what? I bet if I can't get you to come out with talk, I got something else that might make you show your face. From the quick look I got at you, you seemed, you seemed a little on the puny side. I'll bet anything you're hungry. Just so happens that I've got a spare bologna and mustard sandwich and an apple in the car. You interested? Shucks. How did he know I was so hungry? Then he said, might even have some extra red pop. Before my brain could stop, could stop it, my stomach made my mouth yell out, but I don't like mustard, sir. Readers, to understand Bud's perspective, I am going to ask myself, what do I notice about his inner thinking? And I'm going to use the, the sentence starter, blank is thinking. So I'm going to say Bud. Bud is thinking. Based on the text right now, I see that he says, um, right over here. How could he tell I was from Flint just by seeing my face for a second in his headlights? I wonder how grown folks know so doggone much just by looking at you. I notice that there's no dialogue marks here, so Bud is not saying this out loud. It's inner thinking. He's thinking it in his head. So he's saying, how does this guy know so much about me just by looking at me? So already I can tell that Bud is feeling a little bit uneasy. He's, he's not sure whether he should trust this man who just stopped his car out of nowhere and is asking him these questions like, are you from Flint? Are you by yourself? You see, he's probably worried that something um, is going to go down here. And then later on, I'm noticing over here again, shucks, 
how did he know I was so hungry? So that that inner thinking there is also making me think that yes, he's feeling worried and he's wondering, how does this person know so much about me just by looking at me? How does he know I'm hungry? So Bud is thinking that this man knows a lot about him without even knowing him that much. Notice how I just came up with that theory based on inner thinking. But now I want to ask myself, what do we learn about the character based on what they say and how they act? So I'm learning that Bud feels worried and uneasy about talking to this man. And now my example is going to be about what he says and how he acts. So let me go back into the text and look for that. What does Bud say and how does he act? So now I'm looking at the text and I want to find a place where I can clearly see Bud's actions. So it says over here, hmm, I wonder how grown folks know that so doggone much. He stood up. Oh, this whole time Bud has been hiding. And now what does he say? Before my brain could stop, could stop it, my stomach made my mouth yell out. But I don't like mustard, sir. Ha. Huh. So now I notice that based on his inner thinking, he's be he's a little worried about this person asking him all these questions. Like he doesn't really know why he's asking him all these questions. And he's been hiding. So inner thinking is he's not sure about this person. His actions show that he's hiding, so he is a little scared. And now what is this dialogue saying? But I don't like mustard. He's replying back to his offer about the sandwich. So now I am going to revise my theory. I'm saying I'm learning that Bud feels worried about this person coming to talk to him, but he also feels a little hopeful and he's willing to talk to him. For example, he says, hey, but I don't like, but I don't like mustard because he wants the food for him. To add on, he acts like he doesn't really want to see him, he's hiding, but he is really hungry, so he's willing to trust him right now. Readers, did you notice how I made a theory, I came up with a theory on character perspective by thinking about the inner thinking of my character, their actions, and their dialogue? I want you to try this work. We're going to do this with a another excerpt from But Not Buddy, and this time we're not going to focus on Bud. You guys are going to focus on the minor character, Mr. Lewis. So I'm going to read the excerpt out loud and then I'm going to have you guys pause the video and you're going to try the same sentence starters that I model with so you can practice coming up with a perspective theory on Mr. Lewis. Let's give it a go. He said, well, I'll be. You know, at first glimpse, I wouldn't say you look that much like Herman. But now that I look at you, I suppose you do. Of course, he's quite a bit bigger, if you know what I mean. This was the best news I've had all day. My face nearly split in half from my giant smile. Yes sir, folks say I'm the spitting image of my old man. He really started shooting the questions at me. So to top him off, I said, sir, could I please have the sandwich and the rest of the red pot before I answer any more of your questions? He slapped his forehead and said, oh, I'm sorry, bud. I was so surprised about who you are and so happy that you didn't drive off that I forgot all about our deal. He handed me the sandwich and the pop and the apple. I was so hungry that I forgot all about scraping the mustard off the bologna sandwich. And even like that, it was the best sandwich I've ever had in my life. But, he said, my name's Mr. Lewis. Now, if you were about 15, 20 years old, you could call me Lefty. But you're not, so you can. Mr. Lewis will do just fine. I shoved the part of the sandwich that I was chewing into the side of my mouth so I could say, yes sir, Mr. Lewis, sir. So now readers, pause the video and I want you to think, what do you notice about the characters in your thinking? What do you learn about the characters based on what they say and how they act? Give it a go. Readers, today we did some really rigorous work. And I want you to know that the work we did today is going to help you with not just your reading, but with also your writing work. And just like we had a narrative unit in fourth grade in writing, you will also have a narrative unit in fifth grade in writing. So remember this, this uh, lesson today and always. Remember that readers analyze differences in perspective by asking, what do we notice about the characters in your thinking? What do we learn about the character based on what they say and how they act? 
Remember our academic words, perspective, minor character, and inner thinking. So now, when you go back to your independent work, I want you to work on rereading chapter 12 of Bud, Not Buddy. As you read, think about the perspective of the minor characters you meet. In chapter 12, you are only going to meet Mr. Lewis, so your work, your work will revolve around him. Okay? Stop and think. What do you notice about the characters in your thinking? What do you learn about the characters based on what they say and how they act? Stop and jot on the Google Doc and make sure that you cite text evidence. We know from fourth grade that this was something that was expected from us all the time and I don't want you guys to lose that just because we're in remote learning. Remote learning is still learning. So make sure that you guys work on that. To step up the rigor, if you feel like you're completely done and you're ready for a challenge, think about how this part of the text connects to a previous part that you have already read. Good luck everybody and see you soon!